Math Blast 1. I understand multiplicative comparison statements. 12 equals 3 times 4 is the same as saying 12 is four, 3 times as many as 4. Blank times as many as 7 is 14. Well, I know two groups of 7 is 14. So 2 times as many as 7 is 14 means that 7 times as many as 2 is 14. I understand place value relations. Write the value of the 4 in each number. 3,245 has a 4 in the tens place, and 4 tens has a value equal to 40. 4,876 has a 4 in the thousands place, and a 4 in the thousands place has a value that's equal to 4,000. Compare the value of the 4 in each number by making a how many times greater or less statement. Well, I'm going to show this on a place value chart here. We have the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. And I want to show each of the numbers on this place value chart. So I have 40 compared to 4,000. Now, Notice the four that's sitting in the tens place has to shift two times on the place value chart to get from the tens to the hundreds to the thousands. And each time a digit shifts to the left on a place value chart, it multiplies by 10. So we're multiplying by 10 and then multiplying by 10 again. So with that in mind, I can bring up this idea that in multi-digit whole numbers, a digit in one place represents 10 times what it represents in the place to its right. So we're going to make the statement here that 4,000 is 100 times greater than 40. And again, that's because we make two shifts on the place value chart, so you're multiplying by 10 and then multiplying by 10 again, which is essentially the same as multiplying by 100. I can decompose fractions. Decompose 5 eighths into a sum of fractions with the same denominator. Use a model to justify your work. So I'm going to start with 5 eighths, and I'm going to use a number bond here. 5 eighths is my total. And to decompose means to break down, to break apart. And we want to put this into a sum of fractions. So we want to break this apart into fractions that we can add together to get that 5 eighths. And so I'm going to use unit fractions here. A unit fraction is a fraction that is one of the parts, so 1 eighth. And I'm going to repeatedly add unit fractions until I get to 5 eighths. That means I'm going to need five groups of one eighth. And there we go. We have a model that's showing one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth is equal to five eighths. And I could write that as a number sentence as well. Here we have a number sentence or an equation. On the back side, I can convert metric measurements. Write the rule and complete the conversion table. The rule for converting meters to centimeters is multiply by 100. So I'm going to say in my table, meters is equal to or I'm sorry, meters times 100 is equal to centimeters. So now we have the rule in the table itself, and we can use that rule to finish filling in the rest of the table. Again, meters times 100 is equal to centimeters. So 1 times 100 is 100. 3 meters times 100 is 300 centimeters. 8 meters times 100 is 800 centimeters. 
I can identify and construct parallel perpendicular lines, line segments, and rays. Identify the line segment below. A line segment is a part of a line, so it has endpoints at both ends. Here I see line segment x, y. Or we could have called that line segment y, x. And because the ends are the same, they both have endpoints, it doesn't matter the order in which we say the letters. Draw line EF parallel to ray CD. Now a line extends in both directions, so we're going to have arrows at both ends. So here, I'm going to call this line EF. And we want that to be parallel. So parallel means no matter how far extended, they're never going to intersect each other. And we're making it parallel to ray CD. So a ray has an endpoint and extends in one direction to infinity here. And it is important the order in which we place the letters for a ray because both ends are not the same. We want to start with the endpoint, so that's C, and then we move in the direction of the arrow, so that's D. There we go. We have line EF parallel, meaning never going to touch, ray CD. Draw ray BH intersecting line segment HI. So again, a ray is going to have an arrow and an endpoint. We start with the endpoint. We move in the direction of the arrow. We're going to call that BC. And we want it to be intersecting line segment HI. So intersecting means it's going to cross. And it's line segment, so we need endpoints at both ends. And HI, and we can put these letters in either order because the ends are the same. There we have it. Ray BC is intersecting line segment HI. That's all for today, math friends.